Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by to watch. I don't know what is up with my camera today. I feel like I'm like tipped, so <laughs> I don't know. I can't really tell, but I'm sick of filling with it. So I apologize if, you know, this video is a little crooked or maybe that's just how it looks to me. But anyway, tonight I'm out here on my porch. It's finally warming up enough to come out in the evening and visit with you guys out here, which is great because I don't always get a lot of quiet time inside. <laughs> so tonight I want to talk to you guys about homesteading. What does it mean to be a homesteader? But before I do that, you may have noticed that I have changed my name here on YouTube to Tora Led Homestead. Um, kind of catchy, right? <laughs> the thing is, is I've known for quite a while that I needed to change up, you know, some things on here. My name, um, just basically my brand, rebranding. <laughs> um, as my priorities have shifted, um, so although this is a new YouTube channel, I have actually been on social media for about 14 years now. And I ran for a long time a blog called Classical Homemaking. Before that, it was called Hope in Every Season. And it just became a really popular homemaking blog. Um, and so it's been hard for me, I guess, to give that up, um, to actually think about letting that go. And um, that's just silly. <laughs> so the father is leading me in a different direction um, and has been for quite a while. So I took the plunge, changed my name, changed all my social media, everything is now Tara Led Homestead, and I have also opened up a new blog and by that same name, taraledhomestead.com, where I am moving over some content from my old blog and offering new content as well. So whatever you're on, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, if you'd like to read blogs, if you just like to watch YouTube videos, whatever, I've changed up everything. Everywhere you'll find me as Tara Led Homestead. All right, so that leads me into this idea of homesteading because you guys who know me and have been watching me for a while know that I'm not some kind of um, hardcore homesteader in the traditional sense, right? So why have I chosen that name? Partially because <laughs> I'm really hoping that within the next year we will be on some land um, in our local area. Um, as most of you know, I think, I can't even remember if I've announce this on here or not, but my father ended up passing away in January. Um, he got COVID pneumonia and he went really quick. It was really shocking to all of us because he was fairly young. He was only 69, super healthy, um, super active. He was a building contractor and so he was up and down, you know, ladders, working on roofs and remodeling homes and building complete homes from the ground up by himself. And all that kind of stuff. In fact, he had just finished a home right before he passed away that he had done all his, on his own. Um, so it was really surprising to everybody. But um, because of that, there will be an estate, and um, and I'm gonna go. I'm going to use my portion of it to purchase some land for our family. So I will be, you know, like a real legit homesteader one of these days soon. But I just want to give the idea, maybe throw it out there, that anybody can be a homesteader at any point in their life. I truly believe that. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight and kind of make my case. So what do you think of when you think of a homesteader, right? Most people probably think of somebody who has land, who has animals, has a little farm going, you know, grows their own food, raises their own meat animals, you know, milk from cows or goats or whatever. Uh, maybe someone who sells livestock and, you know, maybe even to the point of living off grid, um, someone who, you know, just sort of crunchy. <laughs> um, we have all these ideas about, you know, what a homesteader is, someone who, you know, builds their home, you know, log cabin or something from the ground up sort of a thing. And those things are all true. I think we get that from a traditional point of view about homesteading. So it is true back in 1860, 62, somewhere in there, um, the Homestead Acts were enacted, right? It began um, several years of Homestead Acts in America. And basically the Homestead Act was a really basic <laughs> explanation. If you were 21 years or head of your household, um, if you had never taken up arms against the US government, um, you could claim up to 160 acres of land in the U.S. Um, women could do it, immigrants, people who had applied for citizenship, um, you know, all races of people already living here, um, former slaves, anyone, anyone could apply for this um, land. 
gift, I guess, from the government. Um, it was $18 to apply. And so there was just a few stipulations, like you had to live on the land for five years, you had to build a home, you had to improve the land, you know, just things like that. And then if you stayed for five years, the land was yours. It turned out that the government ended up giving over 1.6 million acres of land away, which was like 10% of all of the area of the U.S. And so it was pretty cool. Too bad they're not doing that nowadays, huh? <laughs> but um, it's pretty much been um, claimed, right? And so it's very difficult now to find land at a good price. Um, although we just drove out to Oregon and back, and there's a whole lot of land out there. <laughs> Anyone who says the world is overpopulated has not driven through Kansas all day and Colorado all day and Wyoming all day and part of Utah all day, <laughs> Idaho, <laughs> and even parts of Eastern Oregon. Lots of land out there. All right. But anyway, I digress. So if we think about, you know, people like on, on the Oregon Trail, the Pioneers, the, you know, Little House on the Prairie, the Ingalls family, those are all examples of people who took advantage of these homesteading acts and um, came out west. Usually, most of it was settled past, you know, the west of the Mississippi River. So um, those are all some examples. So when we think of homesteading, we think of people like that. But modern homesteading is actually more about a mindset and not so much about uh, you know, checking all the boxes. <laughs> it's a mindset. Um, I recently read somebody say that homesteading, they think of it like insteading. Like, instead of this, I do this. And these things make me a homesteader. So it's basically just a, a life of becoming more and more self-sufficient, right? So, you know, if you homeschool your children, that can be considered a form of homesteading in, fe in the sense that you are doing something instead. Instead of the government taking control of your children's education, you are taking control of their education. You know, if you are able to plant, you know, a garden, no matter how big or small, you know, a pot of herbs on your porch, right? You are growing those things instead of purchasing them from the store. Cooking from scratch, you know what goes into your food as opposed to just purchasing it pre-packaged. You know, you're insteading, uh, which is a form of homesteading. You know, natural medicine, anything that you do that you are replacing um, your reliance on somebody else. And instead you're relying on your own, you know, knowledge, wisdom, ability, um, relying on the Father to lead you and direct you. That is the modern form of homesteading, right? So most of the people on this channel are probably homesteading in one way or another. Even if you live in the city, in an apartment, in a rented room, um, if you've got a pot of herbs on your windowsill, or if you, you know, bake your bread in the morning from scratch, those sorts of things. I truly believe, and many other homesteaders believe also, that that is a form of homesteading. So I've always kind of been a homesteader, I guess, right? In one way or another. I've always liked to cook from scratch and preserve my own food. Um, depending on where we live at the time, I've often been able to grow a lot of my own food with an outdoor, you know, a garden in our yard, or um, sometimes I've lived on properties that have fruit trees and nut trees. Um, in Oregon, we lived in a little town where I had several fruit trees in my yard, a couple of nut trees, and then just a couple blocks away was um, just tons and tons of wild blackberries that we would go and pick. Um, fishing was within minutes. Um, deer and elk hunting was within minutes. And so we were able to really um, live a lot more self-sufficiently that way and put a lot of food away. We lived in Seattle area where there's not a lot of room and a lot of space and it's very city-like, but we were still, you know, canning and uh, we were still learning about making bread and just learning, learning the skills that we wanted to later use. And so, and then, like I said, hopefully soon we'll have our land and then maybe we can even get some livestock and start learning about raising livestock. Um, but all these things, you know, to be more and more self-sufficient, that's just really my goal. And... Um, I think it's just really important. The past few years, I've learned more about, you know, dehydrating food, preserving it that way, preserving it by pressure canning. I finally pulled out my pressure canner after years of it sitting, <laughs> being, <laughs> being afraid of it. Um, I finally pulled it out and it's not difficult at all. Um, we have been practicing, you know, off-grid scenarios and kind of seeing what sort of things we need to have here um, in preparation for in case that happens. But like I said, many people think that they can't be homesteaders until they're in a certain situation, and that is just not true. Some people think that they're too old. <laughs> we actually were talking to somebody in our family and told them our plan for buying land, and 
And that person told my husband that he was too old. <laughs> He's 42. I don't know. I don't think that's too old, but you're never too old to start living more self-sufficiently. And self-sufficiency is really the heart of homesteading. So I hope that encouraged you guys. Let me know how you are practicing homesteading or insteading uh, right where you're at. And please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I hope you guys enjoy all of the new content that's coming this spring. Um, I'm just getting ready actually to shoot a video in the next couple of days on canning tomatoes um, and what you can do with all of the pieces of the tomato so nothing is wasted. A lot of people have asked about that. Um, and I've got lots more canning and other food preservation ideas videos for you guys coming up this spring. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. All right. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.